Friends, would you join me as we call one another to worship? <coughs> Today, God makes common cause with our human suffering. We read the scriptures, sing the hymns, feel the feelings of the day Christ died. Suffering is not rational, it has no answer. But in the cross, God meets us in our suffering. From this day forward, we know that there is nowhere we can go where God is not with us. God, into your hands we commend our spirits. We stand near the cross, O God, disturbed, distraught, discouraged. Yet we gather here as disciples, those whom Jesus loves. On this day of great solemnity, let us stand as witnesses to your great love for all the world, revealed in the outstretched arms of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Chapter 14, verses 32 through 40. 
listen for the word of God. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep away. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand.
A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him and left the, uh, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. But he was, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. And the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. The female servant, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystander, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and you talk like one. But he began to curse and swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock, uh, the cock crowed for the second time. Then, Pete, then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and died. Today we gather here to listen to stories which are probably familiar to us, and yet they still make us uncomfortable. If we are honest, we can find ourselves in the courtyard as well, saying the same words that Peter said, I do not know what you are talking about. I do not know this man. So now let us take time to confess those moments in our own lives of faith when we have looked at Jesus and said, I do not know you. I do not know your ways. Let's pray together. Christ, at times we act as if we do not know you. At times we say of you, away with him. When we think of those times, we weep and ask you to forgive us.
those who were crucified with him also haunted me. Oh. 
Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him was uh, saw that it was now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. 